spot? Yes. All right. I'm not looking forward to this. Now, all I need to do now is to pour the salt. Please move back. My goodness! I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. No, not my hair. I just feel sorry for the, eh? for the fish. That they are dying? Yeah. But we have to kill them. I know. <laughs> so the fish are still now. That was quite a violent reaction yeah. that they had. I you thought know, we, we had, had poured the, the salt. And you can see that, um, you know, we got splattered by some of the salt. Um, so what what is it in the salt that actually kills them so good? Does it like go through their skin or... What happens? Once they put the salt, they react and they sink. The salt penetrates into their skin. You know, normally, normally they are very slippery. Yes. You will see when we are going to wash them now. All this slippery thing will, will be off when we get to the washing stage. It's kind of like when you put salt on snails. Exactly. So it neutralizes so, that slime. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, does it hurt them though? It does. That's why they die. So, but as we have done it now, we still have to leave them for about 20 minutes before they are fully dead. They are not dead yet. I can see. Yes. So that, the reason why it's writhing around like that is because it's suffering and in pain. Yes, yes. Oh, I feel really bad about yes, that. Yes. You will see the, look, take the color now. In under 20 minutes, you see the ch a change in, in the color. Yes. It'll be more like that dead fish we yeah, saw. Exactly, yes. Sort of uh, bleached yes, almost. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry for the fish. But that's the fastest way of killing them. Really? If you try to, if I bring out a life one day and I say you should kill it, you see how much struggle you will, yeah. you will do before you kill just one. Mm. So imagine if we had to kill this one one by one. Yes. How long is it going to take us? I'll feel a lot better when I see them nicely smoked. <laughs> yeah, but well, you don't know what they've gone through. You don't know what they've gone through. That's right. Well, this place is really incredible because we've got more than catfish smoking going on here. I'm standing in front of a nice goat pen. They seem to have their own little language going on here. They were talking to me a few minutes ago, which was quite amusing. There they go. I think they're squabbling over their food. And I'm gonna just walk around the whole garden, really. I think this is a guava tree. And then over here, we've got a nursery, I've been told, for the catfish. Let's go have a look. Aha! Uh -huh. Now I can see the nursery and all the little catfish darting about. They're so tiny. Now I understand that the catfish are sort of uh, cannibals in their own right, that they will eat the smaller of their kind in one collective point. So these catfish here, as soon as they start growing a little bit bigger than another catfish, they're moved to another pond to be with catfish that are more their size. Poor little things don't know what's in store for them. I wonder what they're thinking. As I walked around, there were other interesting things to eat, I noticed. Avocados, bitter leaf, a really bitter tasting leaf that adds a peculiar but delightful taste to indigenous dishes. Water leaf, herbs and pepper. As I said, there's a lot of food around here in this garden. You're not gonna get hungry. This is another leaf I'm told is called the Yanuk Baja because that's where it was first planted. I believe it was brought here to this country by the Indian community. Now the leaves are, are edible. I want to show you the passion fruit though. Here's the passion fruit I was talking about. It's a soft, seedy, pulpy, sweet and sour treat. I'll have to revisit when it's born fruit. Now that the fish are all hopefully dead, they are collected for the washing process. It's 
so now we're washing the fish one by one? Yes. Are they all dead, really? Some of them are not entirely dead. Really? You will see from their reaction. Oh, uh, yes. yes. But they are, they are safe to be washed now. And if you put one of these fish back who are sort of still alive back into the ponds, would they sort of regenerate? No, 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 no not at this stage. Yeah. Can I feel the difference in the skin now? This one is dead, right? Yes, it's dead. Are you sure? Oh, I don't know why I'm so scared of these things. It's really soft. And smooth. Yeah. It's no longer slippery. I'll, I'll give you the ones that I've not washed. Yeah. To see Can how I have a look in their mouths? I want to see, like, do they have any teeth? No, 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 no. They don't. You will see all these when I'm removing the intestine. Yep. I don't think I could do this job. <laughs> this is not a job for me. <laughs> But it's fun for me. Yes, I can see you're enjoying it. So and I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of it. I'm, I know you are very proud. You should be proud. It's a great product. It's a great. So tell me, is this a, a hobby for you? Would you call this a hobby? Yeah, I call it hobby because if I had wanted to expand into big commercial business, I've had a lot of offers, friends, who I say, can we invest in this your business? They look at it, but I say. No, I've done, I don't want to expand. I only want to do what I can do by myself. Without, I say that's only what I can give guarantee. And I'll be sure that my customers will enjoy what I'm doing. That's why I call it a hobby. Next, the fish are gutted, removing all internal organs, leaving a clean cavity. This is important. <laughs> 